Hi everyone, in this video we will continue solving some more problems and learn some new concepts. So for the first problem here, this is going to be 1 and this is going to be k starting from 1 to m and, k, and this is for 1, right? So it is going to be m iterations and for this one it is going to be um, i starting from 1 going till n for m right so it is going to be n and m you see that here this is this one took m iterations and this one took i starting from 1 to n so n and m are two independent uh, integers they are not dependent on in uh, on each other that means n can be 10 m can be 20 and these for loops will run as many times as these two values so we can say that these two for loops are independent. Now let's look at this problem. Here this one is going to be 1 and this one since it is going from k is equal to 1 to uh, m so it is going to do m iterations. This one is going from i is equal to 101 to 100 plus n or this value right. So this one is also taking n iterations that is because you see here 101 sorry 101 and then the next value is going to be 102 since it's incrementing in terms of 1 103 104 and so on up to 100 plus n minus 1 100 plus n you see that here the number of times this loop is going to execute is n that's why this will execute n times this will execute m times and since these two are two uh, different integers we can say that these two for loops are independent now coming to this one this one will execute one time and this one is starting from k is equal to 1 to i and we do not know the value of i this i value is same as this value and if i is equal to 1 this one will execute one times if i is equal to 2 this one will execute two times correct so that's why we see that these two loops are these two loops are dependent here now this one is going from i is equal to 1 to n which will take n iterations because it's incrementing in terms of 1. So this these two loops we can see that since it is n iterations and this loop is going to depend upon this i value we can see that these two are dependent. Similarly for this one this is going to execute once and this one is going from k is equal to 1 to i for 1. Right? So this is going to be i iterations and this one is going from i is equal to 101 to n plus 100 which is same as 101, 102 so on up to 100 plus n which is n iterations right. So this one will iterate n times and this one will iterate i times that means it is going to depend on this value that's why we can say that these two for loops are dependent now let's look at some different type of a for loop here we do not have i is equal to i plus plus but instead we have i into 5 so in this one how it's going to ex how many times is it uh, going to execute is this one will execute once as we have seen before this one is going to be let's i'll put a table for this one now the i values uh, i values are 1 and then it is going to be 1 into 5 and then it is going to be 5 into 5 which is 25 and then 125 and so on correct so i can write uh, uh, i in terms of e that is it is going to be now if i write 0 1 2 3 and so on i can write it as phi of e so which is going to be phi of 0 is 1 phi of 1 is 5 phi of square is going to be 25 phi cube is 125 right so the last value is going to be some value p and phi power p this phi power p should be less than or equal to n 
should be less than or equal to n 5 power p less than or equal to how do we solve this one in order to solve this one we will take log on both sides so when when we take the log it is going to be log of phi of n so this is nothing but 1 so it is going to be p less than or equal to log of n power phi so this loop is going to execute starting from i is equal to 1 2 sorry is equal to 0 to p right so which is nothing but p is nothing but log of n to the base phi so this is same as log of n to the base phi this is the number of times this loop is going to execute now for this one this one will execute once this one again it is starting from one and put it as incrementing in terms of into two so we will write a table for this one so k value k what are the values that k is going to take k k is starting is one and then one into two 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 into two four and then eight 16 and so on correct so k value we can write it in terms of a and a values i can uh, write k in terms of e as 2 power e now if when e is 0 2 power 0 will be 1 when e is 1 2 power 1 will be 2 when e is 2 2 power 2 will be 4 and so on correct so now it will go uh, let's say it will start from 0 and it will go up to p so now that uh, in that case 2 power p has to be less than or equal to n because this for loop is starting from 1 and it is going to starting from n and it is going till some value less than or equal to n so we have 2 power p less than or equal to n now we know that this e value is taking from 0 to p that means it is executing 1 plus p times correct so in this case we have to find what is the p value so for that we will take log on both sides so it will be less than or equal to log of 2 to the base n so this value is 1 so it will be p less than or equal to log n to the base 2 so i can write the summation as e starting from 0 and going till p for 1 which is nothing but 1 plus p correct so now i know the value of p which is log of n to the base 2 now this is the number exact number of times it is going to execute so if they have asked you to find the exact number of times it is going to execute then you have to include this plus one as well but if they have just asked you to find out the time complexity for this code then you can ignore this value because since this is one we can consider it as a constant now in this problem i ignored zero here i did not write one plus p i just wrote here log n to the base five so the time complexity for this one will be log n to the base five but then if they have asked me the exact number of times this one is going to execute then it will be 1 plus p times so 1 plus p would have been 1 plus log n by 5 so this is the exact number of iterations similarly for this one this is the exact number of iterations so i can write here the answer as 1 plus log of n to the base 2 now this summation is going from i is equal to 1 to n for the values below Right, so i is equal to 1 to n for this value 1 plus log to the base 2 of n so the answer for this one is summation of i is starting from 1 to n 1 plus summation of i is starting from 1 to n log of n which is we know the answer for this is n And for this one it is log n to the base 2 is a constant so i'll take it outside i am left with 1 so n plus log 2n into n 
so now this is the actual number total number of iterations that is going to execute and the time complexity is going to be theta of n into log base to the n since this is the bigger term here now i neglected this term because n log n is greater than n now let's study one more concept that is called dominant terms so now for that i have taken this example 27 n to the power 4 m plus 6 n cube plus 7 n m square plus 100 now if they have asked you to find the theta for this or the dominant term for this then how do you have to find out is uh, you see that in this expression we have two variables n and m now for n this is the term which has the biggest uh, index correct now for m we have m to the power 1 here and m to the power 2 here now we have to consider all the variables in the expression and write the all the variables that has the biggest term for it biggest index for that so for n it is going to be this expression and for m it is going to be this expression we write both of these values because if n value was 1 and if m value was 100 you see that this value is going to be 27 100 plus 7 into 1 into 100 square so in that case this term will be greater right than this one that's why this term also has a significant impact on uh, for this equation similarly now if n value was 10 and m value was 1 then it will be 27 10 power 4 into 1 plus 7 into 10 into 1 so in that case this value is greater right so this value also has an impact greater impact on this one but you see that when a whatever the value of n and m might be this value will always be smaller than this and since this is a constant we can never say that uh, i mean uh, this one will not have any impact on the equation that's why we say that theta is going to be 27 theta will be n power 4 m plus n m square if they have asked you to write the theta then you write like this if they have asked you to write the dominant term then you write the constants as well so in that case dominant terms will be n power 4 m plus n m square so this is the concept of dominant term so dominant term is nothing but in the expression whichever has the biggest impact on the time complexity those terms will have will be included so this is it for today's video we will continue time complexity in our next video thank you for watching